water. Hey, bud. Don't you jump out. Hi, Benji. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Hi. Are you okay? Okay, let's go. What's poppin' YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share this video if you like what you see. Tell a friend that knows a friend that knows a friend. Go subscribe to Brittany's channel. She got some great content. She has new content coming. And let them know this is the best place to be if you want to know anything about dogs, dog grooming, dog nutrition. It feels so good to be back, y'all. I'm so happy to be back. This is my second day back from my long two week stretch. I'm feeling good. As you can see, I sound better than I did <laughs> the first video that I was back. I'm feeling really good. Let's get straight into this video. Now I know on my videos, I usually do prep work first, but let me tell you, this day I was so behind. This is Benji. He is a very sweet dog. He's great for everything. He just doesn't like his nails done. But as you all know, that is typical for dogs. That's typical for dogs. But this is Benji. He's a very sweet boy. He doesn't get a full haircut. His mom likes him to be on the fluffier side. So for Benji, we did a nice cleanup on him. We did his paw pads. We did some nice brightening shampoo, some conditioning shampoo, and, and a nice deep coat conditioner on him because he does have really thick, long fur. But as I stated, this was one of those days where I was extremely busy, so I did not have time to do his prep work first. But to be honest, his prep work was the majority of his haircut, so that's another reason why I just took him straight to the bath so I can get him all clean and start his haircut process. As you can see, I put a towel at the bottom of the bathing tub because that I have found lessens the sound and the harshness of the dryer. Even with the cotton balls in the dog's ears, the sound lessens when you put a towel on the bottom grate. It helps drastically, and I mean drastically. So for new bathers, new groomers, if you are planning on drying a dog in a tub, make sure you put a towel down one that catches a lot of the water because as you know the water bounces off of the tub and back onto the dog well at least that's what most people say i don't typically experience that because there's a certain way that i dry my dogs if i have to dry them in the tub but it catches all the water the majority of the water i'll say not all of the water but it catches the majority of the water it helps the dog dry a lot faster and like i said it lessens that sound drastically it almost muffles it to a point So as I stated earlier, Benji does not get a full haircut. He just kind of gets a cleanup around his body because she likes him long. She likes him to grow out. So right now I'm brushing him, catching all the mats and tangles that he has in his coat. And I'm going at them with that Chris Christensen brush, which is linked in the description box. I do now have all of my tools or the majority of my tools that will be beneficial to y'all linked in the description box. I did put my clipper in there. As I stated in one of my previous videos, I'm not a fan of the clipper but it's really good for beginner groomers who would like a cordless clipper so check out the description box if you are looking for some of the products and some of the items that I use when I'm grooming a lot of them I really really love especially the brush that I'm using now and my matte zapper as I've stated before it is a bit on the pricier side but I've had that matte zapper for I want to say almost six years now and I've never had to change one of the bristles. I've never had it snap. Nothing has come out of place. It's a really good well made brush and it lasts for a while and it, it gets the job done. And the brush that I'm using now is the Chris Christensen brush. It's called the Big G. I've had that brush. I recently just got that brush from a fellow groomer and I got that brush. I've been using it since December 2021 
and it's it's a great brush like i said it holds up very nicely it's not coming apart none of the bristles from the brush is bending or snapping or anything like that it's just a really good brush and the benefit of that brush is you can get it in a couple different sizes the matte zapper you can't but the big g they also have a black one called the big k you can get them in three different sizes they have a large they have a medium and they have a baby a baby g which i think that's a really cute name but i have the medium size I use it for all of my dogs, big or small, and it's perfect. So I kind of want to switch the topic up a little bit. If you haven't, I do have a poll on my channel. In my last video, I forgot to tell you where the poll is located. I, I learned that some people don't know where it is located or can't access it. So if you go to my channel under the community section, it is on that page. Please go take the poll so I can get a little bit more of what you guys are looking to see and what y'all want more for the future of this channel. Just let me know. I am all ears and open to know you can even drop it in the comments and let me know what maybe the next topic of the video you want me to talk about one topic that i did want to talk about is one of the options on the poll is grooming seminars so when i put grooming seminars essentially what i want to start doing to add to this channel is basically interviewing different groomers and talking about different topics that are big in the grooming community um, big for groomers to talk about what pet parents need to know and different things like that I am going to do dog nutritionist as well if I can get some I would love to do a dog nutritionist I would love to do a vet on my channel so we can understand different things just a traditional vet as well as a holistic vet because like I've stated before I'm more on the holistic vet side but I would like to understand kind of what traditional vets think and why they don't like holistic medication or holistic treatment and different things like that because I always say to my channel there are natural remedies that will help dogs that are going through certain things I'm not going to say everything because certain things does need traditional treatment but a lot of things you can treat at home with home remedies and there are some vets who I follow on YouTube who I would love to talk to and talk and interview. One is Dr. Karen Becker. I would love to talk to her about different things because she used to be a traditional vet and now she is more on the holistic side, but she does a little bit of both. So I would love to interview her. She's awesome. But for the grooming seminars as, as well as the podcast, which is kind of almost the same thing in itself. I just want to get more information out there because as you all know my channel is about information on dogs and dog nutrition dog health grooming all of that so that's why i want a whole bunch of different things on my channel that still tailors around dogs I've had a lot of people hit me up on my channel and just with questions about where I'm located, if they can get a groomer like me, they would love to have a groomer like me. If y'all let me know in the comments where y'all are located, I might know a groomer in your area. If you are in the Philadelphia area, New Jersey, anything in that surrounding area, I do know of a groomer. Her name is Rayana. She is the owner and operator of Silas Pooch. She is mobile. She is fantastic. She is actually who I learned to groom from. I gave that recommendation to somebody. If y'all need her information, let me know. I can pass that along to you. She is phenomenal. Like I said, she's mobile. She's very patient. She has a Instagram, social media as well. Y'all let me know if y'all are looking for a groom and I can see if I know anybody in your area. But in terms of different options that 
I am going to offer on my page. I do want to keep dog grooming videos because that is where I started. That is what a lot of you come to my channel for dog grooming videos. So I definitely want those still in there. Um, I want more dog nutrition videos in there. Dog nutrition videos, you know, I am a big advocate for dogs living their healthiest life. I'm a big advocate about feeding your dog the right dog food. I know a lot about different things with dogs. I don't know everything. I never claim to know everything. I always strive to know more and I'm a big believer of you learn something new every day and especially with dogs you learn something new with dogs every day because you can never really know everything about dogs so if there is somebody out there that claims they know everything about dogs that is impossible in my opinion super impossible because how could you know every single thing about dogs nobody can be 100 percent sure about anything because there's always maybe that one percent that there is something different but for the channel in terms of new content the channel is not going to change too much guys i don't want y'all to be nervous about that it's not going to change too much like i said we're still going to have the dog grooming videos i just want more content out there so people can understand people can come to my channel if they want to do certain research for dogs it's already on my channel so i want to make this channel not a large variety or a very wide variety but just enough information for a pet parent to come to my channel and if they have any questions, some of their questions are answered. Again, I'm never one to say that I know everything. I'm never one to even promote a channel that has everything on it or knows everything about dogs. But I would like pet parents who are doing research to have some sort of takeaway from my channel. One quick topic I do want to talk about, and I'll probably touch on it, not even probably, I will touch on it in another video, is the importance of brushing and combing your dog. Now, I know I've talked about this a little bit in some other videos, but I really want to weigh heavy on it. It is very important to have a brush and a comb for your dog. Not just a brush, a brush only reaches the top layer. A hard metal comb will go through the coat, reach down to the skin, and reach any tangles or magnet that the dog may have in the coat that that slicker brush is not gonna get in the top coat. So it's super important to have a comb to follow behind it because that is how you find everything that's in the dog's coat. And I can attest to this because I'll be brushing out a dog that I've just, you know, I'm ready to groom, ready to start the haircut, and I'll go through it with a comb and there are still tangles here and there. So coming from a groomer, if I am saying that after I've thoroughly brushed this dog out and I go through it with a comb as just right now, as you saw, there was still a snag, go through with the comb. Always go through back with a comb. That is how you find everything. So when you bring your dog to the grooming salon, your dog is not mad at when you bring your dog to the groomer's line, you can honestly say to your groomer, yes, I do brush and comb him. So that way you can dictate whatever haircut you want. A lot of people come to the grooming salon and they want their dog to look a certain way, but then their dog is a pelted mess and you have to get shaved down. So it is imperative that you brush and comb your dog. Also, for groomers, for new groomers, take pictures of your work. Take your before and after, especially if you know that this dog that you are grooming was severely mad at the beginning and you have to shave it down and you feel like the owner is not going to be happy about the haircut. Take pictures so you have proof so you can show the owner, look, this is why I had to shave the dog down. This is why your dog had to get such a low haircut because brushing this out, one, it's too close to the skin, two, it can injure the dog, three, it's very uncomfortable for most dogs to get brushed out. Some dogs tolerate it, a lot of dogs do not tolerate it if it's not done correctly. And no offense to new groomers, I was a new groomer. I did not know how to properly brush out a dog. When I was a new groomer, I have brush burned a dog before. Everybody has brush burned a dog before. So that's why I say it is very important for you to educate the pet parent at drop off. 
take pictures, do your before and after, even if you give the pet parent the most educated check-in process, still take pictures of your work. One example I do want to give before this video is over because it is winding down. I'm in multiple groomers groups on Facebook. I'm in a lot of groomers groups on Facebook and we see a lot of pet parents because some pet parents are in some of the groomers groups. We see a lot of pet parents come in those groups and say, my dog was this or my dog was that. Or we see a lot of groomers come in the, in the group and say, hey, I had this pet parent, the dog was matted and this happened. So recently someone had a burner doodle get groomed. It was a puppy burner doodle. Now, let me just educate people real quick. When your dog is going through a coat change, when they're going from puppy coat to adult coat, from adult coat to mature coat, because they go through two coat changes. And if you get the dog spayed or neutered, they go through another coat change. When they go through any type of coat change, your dog is going to mat easier. The woman got the dog groomed five months later, which is too long for a doodle coat. Five months later, she got the dog groomed again. I don't know the full story. I just know what the owner put up on Facebook. I know what the groomer responded to on Facebook. So according to everything that the owner put up and the groomer put up, which pretty much was the same information, the owner got the dog groomed, waited five months for the dog to get groomed again. The dog was matted. Dog had to be shaved down. Owner was not happy because the dog was shaved like a poodle, but the groomer tried to leave some hair still left on the dog and it just so happened that the hair that she was leaving on the dog gave the dog a poodle cut i know a lot of doodle owners do not like their dog to look like a poodle the whole term is don't poodle my doodle it is important it is very important one for the groomer to educate the owner severely and two for the owner to bring the dog in more frequently if you have any type of doodle, I can promise you from a groomer standpoint, they have a difficult coat to work with. I love doing doodles, but they do have a difficult coat to work with. Those types of dogs need to be groomed more often. They also need to be brushed on a daily basis, combed on a daily basis. So if you have a doodle, if you have any type of dog with a thick coat, brush it, comb it, and ensure you have the absolute control over the type of haircut that your dog gets. Because if you do not do right, by the brushing and the combing, you will have to have a shaved dog. That is my rant. <laughs> now that my rant is over, we are going to take a quick flashback look at what he used to look like. This is Benji's before and that is Benji's after he looks great. He's all fluffed out, brushed out. Thank you guys for tuning into another video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.